Let's go straight to Sir Christopher Chope, who is Conservative MP for Christchurch, and get uh, his angle on this snap election. Christopher, good morning. Good morning, Alex. Uh, quick question before I get into the nitty gritty of Conservative policies. Uh, are you standing again? Yes, I am. Yeah. Oh, OK, well, there you go. Good luck, Christopher. Uh, do you think you stand Very a good fair. chance? Are you in a safe seat? Are you a rickety, rockety, scary one? Well, I, I, nobody takes anything for granted. And um, I've been lucky enough to represent the Christchurch constituency since 1997. But in 1997, I won it um, from the Liberal Democrats for the majority of just over 2000. So I'm not taking anything for granted. Oh, I see. Yeah. So it's not all sort of, you know, all, all baked in just yet. Right. Uh, Christopher, are you in favour of this snap election? Did it take you by surprise? Are you ready? Well, actually, I was arguing with the Prime Minister in back in January, saying that we should have a general election on the 2nd of May. And the main argument I was putting forward was that we needed to get some strong government back and that the civil service wasn't really operating and nothing was working. And that, that was why we needed to have a fresh mandate. And I coupled in with that my feeling that the Western world faces its gravest threat this coming autumn when you've got the American presidential election, you've got the aftermath of the Olympic Games, you've got other people who have taken their eye off the ball, and that's the maximum opportunity for the Putin regime and the Chinese regime to be able to act against the Western interests. And it's important that the United Kingdom is able to have a, a strong uh, government and leader um, going into that period. Do you think that was at the forefront of Sunak's mind when he uh, stood in the rain uh, just the other day and said, that's it, I'm going to put it to the people uh, to have an election that he thought, right, better you know, make sure we've got a prime minister in place now because by the end of the year, Lord knows what the geopolitical situation is going to be like and the grave threats presented by one Vladimir Putin. Or was he instead thinking more about the grave threats potentially about to be presented by one Nigel Farage? Well, I hope that he was thinking in the national interest and that the, your first uh, proposition is, is the correct one. But who knows what the prime, prime minister's thinking? But I think anybody who uh, chooses to um, go to the people earlier than is necessary when they are um, on a, a loser as far as the polls are concerned, then I think that person has got uh, uh, courage. And I think that we should respect the prime minister for that. And that I think may largely be motivated by his desire to ensure that we do have a strong, stable government in place um, at the end of July in order to deal but with the Do we have a crisis. strong and stable government in place now? I mean, you know, voters are looking at what sort of played out just before uh, Sunak came in and strong and stable to coin Theresa May's favourite robotic mantra is certainly not how things seemed with a coalition government in the form of the Conservative Party. Some might argue that there's bigger difference between the Conservative Party than there is between the Conservative and the Labour Party, that, you know, the sort of centrist elements of the Tories are so similar similar to Labour. You can't put a cigarette paper between them. And yet the big divisions are in the Conservative Party itself. And that sort of fight for the heart of the party has been a huge distraction. It hasn't been stable at all, which is why people are looking at the Labour Party and going, well, I don't like this lot, but at least it's not chaotic. Well, I think one of the biggest problems we've got at the moment, that's why I support a, a general election, is that uh, both uh, parties are beholden to the civil service. It's the civil service that is running this country at the moment. And we need to get elected politicians back in charge. And to hear, hear this morning, I, I, I heard uh, the leader of the opposition, Keir Starmer, saying that it, his agenda, and I quote, will require a whole different approach across Whitehall. So, I mean, what, if you're and saying that, you know, the civil the service is sort that's of... Why we need a, that's why we need... A, a, a government that's prepared to take charge and impose its will on the recalcitrant civil service. And why, why has that not been happening, though? I mean, when did all of this begin? Was it sort of uh, over Brexit that the civil service went, we don't want to do this, and then this lack of discipline suddenly set in? At one point, you had uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg stalking the corridors of power like the demon headmaster, putting post-it notes on people's computers who weren't behind their desk. Next thing you know, there were all these fallouts saying that Pretty Patel's a bully. Oh, this person did this, this person did that. The Tories have been at war with the civil service, but they have been in 
in charge? I mean, what should the Conservative Party policy be in this election campaign to sort of get rid of that problem? Are they going to sort of drain the swamp to coin a favourite of Donald Trump? Well, I think, no, I don't think we need to get, drain the swamp. We we need to take back control. I mean, when, when I was lucky enough to be a, a minister in Margaret Thatcher's government, and uh, in those days, uh, what uh, the prime minister and her other ministers said uh, counted, and the civil service would uh, work with the government to deliver the government's will. That has not been happening recently. And you asked me when, when I thought, think it started. I think it got very much worse over the period of lockdown. And we just heard yesterday from Simon Case uh, that uh, he admits that there was a lack of transparency and openness uh, around that second lockdown. And that was an example of where the civil service was basically um, taking advantage of the gap in, in uh, accountability when Parliament wasn't really civil. Chris, so what I want to know, I think, you're, I think you're talking a lot of sense here. I am minded to yeah. agree with you. I do think the civil service is full of wokeatrons who seem to have their own agenda. But how do you change that? Do you just sort of sack the lot of them and do a tabula rasa, sort of burn to earth theory and sort of get a load of new people in? Do you add some sort of element to their contracts that if you defy the will of the government, you're out on your ear? I mean, how do you actually do the process of taking back control from a recalcitrant civil service? Well, I, I don't think it's, I think it's a lack of leadership to be blunt about it. I, I think the, the leader, the prime minister has got to be able to tell the civil service and the, uh, the head of the civil service that this is what's going to happen, this is what's got to be done. And, and I'm afraid that hasn't been happening. And it, but may it be hasn't been happening, but he is still the leader of your party. He is the party leader running a presidential campaign. As you go into this six weeks nap election, you haven't managed to get rid of him, have you? Should, well, should you be? Would been, you I, sign a letter of no confidence and try and well, well, I, no, oust I have, him? I, have, I, I mean, I've been quite open. I, I didn't support him in the soon act for the, for the, for the leadership, uh, but I haven't uh, been trying to get rid of him. I've respected the fact that he is. The, our prime minister and our leader but i certainly think going back to the earlier conversation i certainly think that it's a mistake to run this campaign as a purely presidential style campaign i think it this politics is a team game and i think that we've got a much better team than the opposition and that's why i would like to see you say uh, that i mean christopher you say team. that but you don't have a very good team do you you fight like rats in a sack we've been through three prime ministers already i mean it's mad there doesn't the team spirit is the thing that the conservatives seem to be lacking and in the words of uh, Isaac Levito your election guru he he's been saying quite clearly to you guys divided parties don't win elections exactly and that's why it's an opportunity if you if you have a presidential style six television debates with one person against another person um, then that means you don't have the opportunity to show other the, the talents of other members of your team who, who will have expertise or should have expertise in their particular areas of responsibility. And, and you can't expect the, the prime minister to be an expert on anything, everything, any more than you could expect Keir Starmer to be. That's why I think we should have um, debates centred around issues right. within this political debate. So we could, for example, have, have a, a, a debate around the role of freedom and responsibility. Um, and, and we could include in that issues around uh, vapes, uh, regulation and, and, and so on. There well, you, 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 of... might be, you, might be, you might be pleased then that uh, Rishi Sunak has dropped his smoking policy, apparently, ahead of this election. I, Christopher... I, I, I and I voted against it. Good. Uh, Christopher, you know, if only we could resurrect uh, Margaret herself. She was really a remarkable woman. Uh, is there anybody in your party who is the sort of Margaret 2.0? Uh, yes, I'm sure there is. Uh, but Margaret wasn't revealed for the great woman that she was until after she was elected as our leader. And so um, I'm, I'm hopeful, I'm not going to name names now, but I'm hopeful that we do have a Margaret Thatcher within our ranks. Not naming names. That's exactly what I wanted you to do. Uh, Sir Christopher Chope, thank you ever so much for coming on Conservative MP for Christchurch there.